Hello, I'm, I'm from the UK Education Funding Agency and I'm going to talk about achieving thermal and acoustic comfort in classrooms in the UK. I want to take you through some design issues and some example buildings. We've got a, a London heat island which causes us some problems. It's, it's 12 degrees hotter than other parts of uh, England and in those areas the, the conventional wisdom is to use exposed thermal mass. We've got to get acoustic absorption right as well and it's quite difficult to do both in the same space sometimes in a classroom. Um, but in cooler climates we, we needn't use the thermal mass in classrooms and we've shown that ventilation can provide adequate summertime cooling. But exposed thermal mass can provide a very stable internal environment. So in, in a heat island it is a sort of ideal solution. The absorption in a room, acoustic absorption, has to be well distributed and Shane was saying about how do you get the basic absorption well distributed when you've got a, a concrete soffit. Now we've got um, very small classroom radio is 60 watts per square metre. That's a maximum as well, it could be a lot less than that. That's insufficient heat to temper the incoming ventilation air. So we've got to find a way to get the air, at when it reaches the occupied zone, comfortable enough. And we've introduced a new guideline which says that the occupied air, when, when it hits the occupied zone, supply air must be at least 15 degrees in the classroom. So this is where we are now to 2015. We've got climate-based daylight modelling, so, so that's using simulation of the real sun and sky. That's led to a lot less um, glazing percentage and less solar gain into the classrooms. And we've got room-based CO2 and temperature control. We've got acoustic absorbers, either hanging absorbers or wings to light fittings. Or a new one I've discovered is as part of the radiant panel, which is sort of what you've come up with as well. Um, but these are just very conventional radiant panels. This is a what we call a, a pre-mixing system. So it's not a heat recovery. We don't have filters and heat recovery units. We're just mixing the room air with the incoming air to raise the temperature up above 15. And we've got a cloth duct to diffuse the air to so that it, it does not uncomfortable. So CO2 demand control is a very good energy saving part of this. And then I do have this problem with the comfort temperatures, so I think we need to go to BS 7726 and talk about the difference in plane radiant temperature instead of, instead of asymmetric temperature difference, which is what the ISO standard asks you for. Thanks, that's, that's me, I think.